one of the great ironies of Jiu-Jitsu is that it does have this strongly addictive side to it. But on the other hand, the attrition rate in Jiu-Jitsu is incredibly high, and the number of people who actually complete their studies is disappointingly low. So how is it that you get on the one hand extreme addiction to the sport, and yet this stunningly high attrition rate? I believe all human beings have an innate love of problem solving. Okay, what enabled us to survive in our evolutionary history was the ability to solve problems. I believe all of us carry within us an innate desire to solve complicated problems, and we, do, we derive great satisfaction from successful solutions. Now, Jiu-Jitsu, to me, is one of the great problem-solving activities. It's problem-solving on a level that few other activities can match. Most problems that we solve are static problems. The problem doesn't change. Jiu-Jitsu, on the other hand, is a dynamic problem. As I get confronted with a problem and I try to create a solution for it, I have a thinking, sentient opponent who identifies my attempts at a solution and tries to change the problem, to create a new one for me. And so as I go to solve a given problem, rapidly I have to switch to a new problem and then on to a new one. There's an escalation process where I'm trying to solve the problem that my opponent is creating faster than he can create new problems. And that's what makes Jiu-Jitsu so, so fascinating. It's a dynamic thing. It has to be done in a certain time frame. With regards to the attrition rate, that I believe is down to the fact that there's a big discrepancy between people's desires and what they actually get from the sport. Okay, when you enter the sport, typically we all have that classic martial arts fantasy of martial arts as a kind of limited superpower. So you create a very big ideal of this is what I aspire to be in Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, I want to be this killer who goes on the mat, slaps hands with my training partner, throws him violently down to the ground, spins behind him and strangles him and walks away and picks up the beautiful girl. Then you run into the reality of training, which is you come in with very limited skills and you go against other people with more developed skills that they're doing longer than you. So you get pinned down helplessly on the mat. You can't move. There's a big fat sweaty guy sitting on top of you. He's on your chest, you're humiliated, can't move, you're squirming around and then he strangles you and you have to submit. So there's a massive discrepancy between what you idealize about the sport and what actually happens in training. And most people don't have an ability to get over that discrepancy. I believe that metaphor is one of the most powerful of all teaching tools. And I see knives as a very, very useful metaphor for the students. When you look at a knife, it's made from steel. And steel begins its life as iron ore in the ground. The process of taking basic raw iron ore and then refining it into steel is an exact replication of the process of starting as a white belt and going through the black belt. When you first come in, you start off as a naive neophyte with no skills whatsoever. And on your first day, you're completely hopeless. Anyone in the gym can destroy you. And so just as iron ore starts off as this unpromising looking clump of worthless material from the earth, and one day can look like beautiful glistening steel to be sharpened to a razor's edge, so too the white belt progresses in the same way. The manner in which iron ore is taken into a superior grade of steel is essentially addition and stress. You add elements and you put stress upon the steel, the forging process. And so too the student learns by addition, knowledge and stress, hard physical training. And the student who starts off as iron ore one day becomes the beautiful polished steel for which can create a truly deadly weapon. To me, that's the pattern of life itself. That's something outside of just martial art, that's life. Okay. And that's where your life as a martial artist and your life in general start to merge. And every time I see a student engage in that general behavior of creating a goal and an ambition, creating a plan of action to bring it about, showing me the discipline to 
stay true to that plan, the resourcefulness and adaptation to change the plan if necessary, and then the courage to step forward and actually take what you wanted. That brings a smile every single time. And that's the magic.